Good evening to everyone. Good evening, kawai, Father. Kawai-kawai naman tayo dyan. Yan. Pag feeling mo cute ka at maganda ka kahit gabi, kawai-kawai tayo. Very good. At sa mga feeling na ang ganda-ganda nila o ang gwapo-gwapo nila, pwede po bang pumalakpak tayo? Ayan. Thank you so much. Let's start our evening of reflection with a song. Lahat tayo, no? Meron tayong hinahanap. Lahat tayo, meron tayong... We long for someone, you know, in our life. And we know that there is just one person who can fill our longing. Let us begin our reflection. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
The Lord be with you. A proclamation from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. From noon until three in the afternoon, darkness came over all the land. About three in the afternoon, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lema sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of those standing there heard this, they said, He's calling Elijah. Immediately, one of them ran and got a sponge. He filled it with wine vinegar, put it on a staff, and offered it to Jesus to drink. The rest said, now leave him alone. Let's see if Elijah comes to save him. And when Jesus has cried out again in a loud voice, he gave up his spirit. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook, the rocks split, and the tombs broke open. The bodies of many holy people who had died were raised to life. They came out of the tombs after Jesus' resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared to many people. When the centurion and those with him who were guarding Jesus saw the earthquake and all that had happened. They were terrified and exclaimed, Surely he was the Son of God. Many women were there watching from a distance. They had followed Jesus from Galilee to care for his needs. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of Zebedee's sons. Brothers and sisters of Love Flock Community, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Shout out po sa inyong lahat. Good evening to everyone. Good evening to the love flock here in the Philippines and abroad. Tama ba ako? May mga kasamahan tayo sa ibang bansa. Kaway ko may mga nasa ibang bansa. Nakikita ko kayo, kayo ay may araw dyan. Kami ay gabi dito. At good evening po sa lahat ng ating mga elders. Nakita ko ang aking tita, ang aking tita Dilia. Hello, shout out. Thank you po. Sister Babette, hello, ang, ang ating nating kasamahan sa opisina. At sa lahat ng members po ng Love Flock. Today is Holy Tuesday and we are given really a chance to reflect on that beautiful experience and that myster- mystery, ang misteryo Pascual, the mystery of the passion, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Ang um, binigay po sa aking assignment no ngayon, ang nagbibigay po ng assignment ay si Tita Leti. Uh, ito yung talagang magaling mangulit, no? pero effective. Effective 'yan. Uh, kahit 'yan ay makulit, nako, okay, hindi ka makaka no dahil sa kanyang pangulit para bang very gospel oriented okay? yung alam mo yung naghihingi paulit-ulit ayaw ayaw to Miguel hanggang sasabihin mo na lang okay so kuna ako sa iyo i give in i give in but well, uh, jokes aside but you know it's not about titaleti but it's about flag clock and uh, uh, i'd like to take this opportunity also to thank you um, for the past months 
we have been journeying together in some of the masses. Maraming maraming salamat po doon. And uh, I know that uh, you are including me and the health healthcare frontliners, you know, in your prayers. Maraming maraming salamat din po sa, sa inyong lahat. Tonight, let me take you into a journey. And our journey tonight, I will share my screen. Our journey tonight would be a journey for the Holy Week. Let me tell this to you, that when you talk about Holy Week or Mahal na Araw, it is basically a journey. Medyo siksik. Kung makikita nyo ang Holy Week natin, napakasiksik. Napakasiksik ng mga nangyayari. Di ba? Siksik na siksik. But all you can do is really to go through, to journey with the story that we will be remembering about the love of God in our life. My, my uh, reflection today would have this theme, Takip Silim. Yeah. Takip Silim. I, I like this picture. Thank you sa mga nag-share ng picture na to sa akin. But I'd like really to focus no, dito sa ating picture. Why? Because the Lenten season would be 40 days of preparing for what? Di ba tayo, pag kayo ay pupunta ng Christ the King, ang nako po yung iba sa inyo handang-handa, naaalala nyo pa ba yun? Yung iba sa inyo handang-handa, may make-up, naka-uniform, nag-practice, handang-handa yan. And we also have to prepare for this Paschal mystery. For the death or for the passion, the death and resurrection of Christ. In the picture, you can see two events. On top of the mountain, you can see there the death. And maybe we, we can include the passion and the death of Christ. Below, on the left part, can you see the picture? Below on the left part, meron tayong the tomb of Christ. Tama? So meron kang death, merong resurrection. Am I right? But there is in between. There is this space in between. What happened in between? And I like us really to focus on that. Ano ang nangyari between the death and the resurrection of Christ? And I like really to focus on the image of Takip Silim. Takip Silim is a Tagalog word for twilight or dusk. Okay? Nag-aagaw yung gabi at saka yung liwanag. Yeah. Galing, di ba? So, yung mga umuwi sa kailang tahanan, sa ganitong mga oras, haha, you always see this. Yung bang over the mountain o kaya over Manila Bay, makikita mo, andoon yung liwanag, yung lumulubog na araw, at nandun din yung dilim. Nag-aagaw yung liwanag at saka yung dilim. That is takip silim. And take note, dito sa pag-aagaw ng liwanag at dilim, this is also our experience right now in this pandemic. This is pakip silim. Nag-aagaw yung dilim. Tumataas ang kaso ng COVID. Ang daming namamatay. Ang daming nadidiscover ng mga variants. Ang bagal ng mga vaccines natin. Nakikita ko dito, oh, ang dami ng mga <coughs> senior citizen. Excited na ba kayo mabakunahan? Okay. Nakikita ko dito, oh, yung mga iba ay nagpakulay na ng... Dati, dati ang buhok mo, puti ah. 
but ngayon naging itim may mystery na nangyari o yung iba pumayat di ba we are all in the takip silim there is this darkness happening at hindi lang yon siguro yung iba dito din ay nawalan ng trabaho yung iba dito ay nagkasakit yung iba dito ay nawala ng mga mahal sa buhay. That is the darkness of Takib Silim. But there is also light, a ray of light that is permeating the darkness. And this is really the hope. Maybe the vaccine, ang mga frontliners natin, ang mga essential workers natin. Kayo, you are our spiritual frontliners nagdadasal para sa mga may COVID, hanggat may mga taong katulad ninyo na patuloy na nagdadasal, patuloy na nagbibigay ng panahon sa Diyos at sa bayan, merong liwanag. Kaya ngayong panahon ito, makikita natin, nandoon yung dilim at saka nandun yung liwanag. Tayo ay nasa takip silim ng ating buhay. I'll go to my to the gallery view. Ako po yung may tatanungin ha. You can raise your hand if your video is on or you can make use of the reactions below. Katulad nito. Oh, okay, yes, Father. Ganyan na. Okay. And I like you to be honest. Nakikita ko kayo dito. Yon. Sino dito po sa atin? ang nagkasakit ng COVID. Please raise your hand. Wow. Janet, girly, then. Wow. Thank you. Next question. Sino dito nagkasakit ang kanila mga mahal sa buhay ng COVID-19. May share hand, please. Oh. Dami. A more difficult question. Sino dito sa atin ang namatayan ng mga mahal sa buhay because of this COVID-19? Please raise your hand. Ana, Manalang family, in Dubai, June and Jenny. Thank you for those who are raising their hands. If I try to continue this, And if I ask you one by one for those na nag-raise ng kanilang kamay, maybe you can just type no, your answers. How do you feel when you lost your loved one? And until right now, COVID-19 is here. Anong pakiramdam mo nung nagkasakit ka? Anong pakiramdam mo nung nagkasakit yung mahamahal mo sa buhay? And until right now, you will always say, Father, di ko alam eh. Uncertain eh. There is this feeling of uncertainty. We are in the takip silim of our lives. Nag-aagaw, nandun yung dilim. Pero may liwanag eh. Nandun yung dilim, pero hinihila ako ng liwanag. Pero pag minsan, nakakaramdam ako ng dilim na mas madilim pa yon kaysa sa aking sarili. Dat nandun ako ngayon. And some of us would say, yes, it's true. The world, our country, our family, and even ourselves, we are in the takip silim of our lives, in the twilight you know, of our lives. We are experiencing it. 
But take note, brothers and sisters, when we talk about takip silim, when you talk about the twilight of our lives, you will talk about a day in the Paschal Triduum that I would say an experience of takip silim. And do you know that day? Oh, pinakita ko na yung picture kanina eh. On the mountain, may cross. On the cave, meron kang light. Anong sabi ko? We focus in between. Am I right? On the mountain, you have Good Friday. On the cave, you have Easter. Ano ang wala? Hmm. Uy. Ano meron? Ulit ko ha. On Good Friday, you have the cross. On Easter Sunday, you have a cave with the light. You have the in-between. Very good, Ranjo. It is the Holy Saturday. On Saturday, it will be Holy Saturday. But what do you do during Holy Saturday? Di ba? Tanong ko sa inyo, ano ang mga pamahiin ninyo nung bata kayo o hanggang ngayon <laughs> na ginagawa nyo pag Friday or Good Friday and, and Holy Saturday? I'll give you one. Ito natutunan ko sa tatay ko. Eh. Ang sabi ng tatay ko, Wag kang maghinuko, wag kang magkat ng nails pag Good Friday daw at saka Sabado ng umaga. Ang sabi ko, bakit po? Kasi baka masugatan ka kasi patay si Jesus. Nagkamot ako. Naniwala ako sa tatay ko. Di ba? O yung iba, anong pinan- paniniwala ninyo? Oop, may sumagot. Bawal maligo. True. That's true. Bawal maligo. Yung iba din, wag daw maligo ng 3 p.m. kasi patay si Lord. Bawal magingay. That's really true. Oh, yan ha. Kaya ligo-ligo. Maligo na kayo ngayon. Kasi sa Friday, base sa mga sagot, bawal maligo. Di ba? Oh, bawal maglinis ng bahay. That's true. Bawal masugatan, di na po gagaling. Yung mga paniniwala natin ito eh. But all of this, no, bawal tumawa ng malakas. Thank you, Norma. No? Bawal magsaya. Oh, parang, hello. Bawal ka magsaya o bawal magingay, di ba? Bawal umakit ng puno. <laughs> bawal malikot. Ang daming bawal. Totoo yan. Tuwing Good Friday and you have now your Holy Saturday. That's really true. But take note, there is always a reason behind all of these things. Siguro sabi natin, bawal magingay, bawal malikot, bawal magsaya, bawal magingay because it should be a time of reflection. Tama? Bawal, sabihin mo, pero yung bawal maligo, naghanap ako ng sagot. Eh. Siguro, o oh, magtipid magtipid sa tubig <laughs> fasting muna tayo sa tubig bawal kumain ng karne yan abstinence yon okay and we have other activities no we have other beliefs during this time of the paschal triduum i like you to reflect on that holy saturday and that holy saturday would connect us to the to both experiences of Good Friday and Easter Sunday. Okay po, I'll share my slide. I'm sorry.
Can you see my slide? Mga kapatid ko, can you see my slide? Thank you, Den. Okay. How do you feel when it is Holy Saturday? Okay. Well, it's true. When you talk about Holy Saturday, Holy Saturday is a day of darkness. It is a day of silence. Yung bawal magingay. It is a day of quietness or eclipse. In sa mga iba, sa mga bata, katulad ko nung bata ako, it's a day of sadness. Kasi bawal maglaro. It is a day of pain or sorrow. Why? Because we all believe this is the reason that it is the end. Patay na si Jesus. Kaya tapat tayo ay magmorn. It is painful. It is an eclipse. It is about sadness. Jesus is dead. He lies in the tomb. In Saturday, the mood is dark. There is a numbling sorrow. There is uncertainty. Our time right now in the pandemic is uncertain. It is just like, you know, a holy Saturday. We are in ECQ. Pag lumabas ka, except sa check- checkpoints, walang mga tao. But take note, tayo kasi, isinilang tayo, meron ng mahal na araw. Meron ng Holy Week. Am I right? Tita Minda, how young are you? Fifty-six, Father. Oh, see? Fifty-six times ka lang nag holy Week. Di ba? Then, how young are you? Thirty-four po. Thirty-four times ka lang nag holy Week. Oh. Di ba? Yung iba dito siguro, more than 60 times ka lang nag holy Week. O 70 times ka lang nag holy Week. And you just go through that Holy Saturday. Pero alam mo yung kwento eh. You know the story. You know the story that after Good Friday, anong susunod? Holy Saturday. And after Holy Saturday, you know that there will be what? Easter. We know that. Yun ang kinalikahan natin. But imagine, imagine, you were there in the time of Jesus Christ. You were one of the disciples. There is no concept of Easter. There is no concept of resurrection at that time. How will you feel? How will you feel? Diba? Yung sinusundan mong Jesus... Patay na. Nilagi na sa libingan. Tinakpan pa ng malaking bato. Yung sinusunda mong akala mong mesaya, wala na. It is the end. The future is uncertain. The next few days would be dangerous. As if you are walking in danger zones. Why? Because they can be rounded up. You, the apostles, during that time can be punished. You've probably been crucified like your master. Takot na takot ka. You are in hiding. They have not yet experienced that new life that we have. Kaya alam mo, yung mga apostles no, during that time would have maybe hard questions. Having no easy answers. Like, what would happen to the cause? Where did things go wrong? 
our leader, si Jesus, namatay na. Anong susunod? Anong meron sa atin ngayon? The experience is black. It is a black Saturday. There seems to be the fine. This is this seems to be the final ending. The burial in the cave, covered by a big stone, is the final ending. At hindi lang yon. Nilagyan pa ng mga guard. Wala na. Eto na yon. Uncertain. Hindi ko alam. Takip silim ng buhay ko. And we are here in that experience, brothers and sisters. We are here in this pandemic. It is uncertain. We don't know. Darating ba yung solusyon bukas? Pag, mag, pag ikaw ay nagpa-vaccine, lahat tayo nagpa-vaccine, no? masusugbo ba natin lahat ito? Hindi natin alam. The anxiety and uncertainty is still there. And therefore, I would say that Black Saturday is when the total light has not yet pierced the darkness and when faith is in the eclipse of waiting. I'd like to repeat that. Black Saturday is when the total light has not yet pierced the darkness and when faith is in the eclipse of waiting. You know, I, I search for the Holy Saturday in the scriptures in between the resurrection and the death. Konti lang yung sinasabi about Holy Saturday eh. In the Gospel of Luke, that Holy Saturday tells us that the women from Galilee rested because it was the Sabbath. Hmm, see? The Gospel of Mark says nothing at all. Matthew tells us that with the approval of Pilate, the chief priests and Pharisees themselves put seals on the stone covering the tomb of Jesus and mount a guard to secure the tomb. In the Gospel of John, John is wordless about the Black Saturday. They are really wordless about the Black Saturday. Nonetheless, I would say, Holy Saturday is a sacred space that invites us to journey into darkness. Holy Saturday is a sacred space that invites us to journey into darkness. Do not be afraid to journey into that darkness. Do not be afraid to be in that silence. Do not be afraid to be on that darkness, on that pain of losing. Do not be afraid of that. Why am I saying this? Because in that Black Saturday, it leads us to a deeper understanding of the God of Jesus Christ and how this God relates to us. That is the experience of the Holy Saturday. Mas maiintindihan natin kung sino yung Diyos ni Jesus at paano itong Diyos na to makirelate sa atin. Why am I saying this? This is the reason. Pakakatandaan natin no? that during the time of Jesus Christ, isolation is already there. Nayon, pag ikaw nagka-COVID, anong gagawin sa'yo? Isolated. Hindi ba? Isolated ka kaagad. Pero noong pa tong isolation na to, if you are sick, then you are isolated. 
Hindi ba pag ikaw may leprosy, you get out of your home. You get out of your house. You should be isolated. Pag ikaw pupunta, dapat may kalembang ka para yung mga tao ay lalayo sa iyo. May social distancing. Di ba? So noon pa, meron na yon. Ina-apply na lang natin ngayon. Isolation, social distancing, at yung mga tao na nun ay tumatakbo. Okay? Kasi nandiyan yung mga may leprosy. Sickness is already isolation. Pag ikaw ay may sakit, kahit anong sakit mo, you are already isolated. Tingnan nyo, sa ating mga magigiting na mga senior citizen, pag ikaw ay may comorbidity na may diabetes, anong sasabihin sa iyo? Bawal kang lumabas. Huwag ka nang munang pumunta ng mall, dyan ka lang sa bahay. You are isolated. Sila nandoon sa mall, ikaw nasa bahay. Sila pwedeng mamasyal, ikaw hindi. That is the cause of sickness. There is a level of isolation. And do you know, the worst is this. The ultimate isolation is death. The ultimate isolation is death. Oh, mga babae, mga girls, hindi ba? Ito napansin ko lang. Pag ang babae ay pupunta sa CR, pwede niyang sabihin sa kapwa niyang sister, Sis, samahan mo ako sa CR. O sige sis, samahan kita. Punta sila ng CR. At magic! Sa isang cubicle, pareho silang nakaihi. Magic. Hindi ba? Pwede ka magpasama. Pero ang lalaki iba, hindi mo pwedeng sabihin, June, samahan mo nga ako sa CR. Hindi mo pwedeng ganun eh. <laughs> Hindi, hindi pa pwedeng lalaki ganun. Pero mga babae, pwedeng magpasama. O kaya, pag ikaw ay pupunta ng mall o palengke, alika, sama mo nga ako. Meron kang pwedeng isama eh. ba diba? Ito, lagi ko ito nakikita si uh, sis Janet at brother Elong. Lagi magkasama. Parang hindi mo pwedeng magpahiwalay. ba diba? Hanggang ngayon, no? kitang-kita ko, dikit na dikit. Uy, physical distancing naman. Dok lang ako. Okay. Ito, si June at saka si Jenny, naku, lagi magkasama yan. Pero pag kayo namatay, hindi ka pwedeng magsama. Hindi mo pwedeng sama, sabihin Jenny kay June, June, samahan mo ako. Hindi pwedeng ganun eh. Hindi ka pwedeng magsama. Hindi ka pwedeng manghila. Why? Because death is something personal. And it is the greatest isolation of all. I repeat, it is the greatest isolation of all. I remember when my parents got affected of COVID-19. Last November, it was really a, a difficult part, no? Para sa amin. We have to isolate them. They are quite old. And we would like really to give the best for them. They cannot stay at home. Because they have comorbidities. May iba pa silang sakit. So, we ask them to be in the hospital. But we know that we cannot go in the hospital. We know that they will be isolated. 
carrying their their weak bodies kasi medyo matanda na sila. You know, ang aking ama at saka ina, nandun sila sa hospital, they stay together there. Isolated. Good that they are asymptomatic. And proper treatment was given. But you know, the painful part of isolation is this. Ang dami mong iniisip. Ang sabi ng tatay ko, baka dito kami mamatay. Baka dito kami maabutan. Ang nanay ko naman, who is suffering of Alzheimer's, kasi nanay ko, hindi na masyadong makakilala eh. Hindi na siya masyadong makakilala ng tao at madali siya makalimot. Ang lagi niyang sinasabi, makauwi lang ako para makita ko ang anak ko at mga apo ko. After 10 days, they should have had been in the hospital for 14 days. But after 10 days, thanks be to God, the result is negative. At sila ay inuwi din sa bahay namin. And there, in our house, andun yung aking isang kapatid. Kami magkakapatid ay hiwa-hiwalay. Pero we made sure na nung pauwi ang nanay-tatay ko, nandun kami sa cellphone. Nasa cellphone kami. Inaabangan din namin yung kanilang pag-uwi. And when they arrived home, umiiyak. Umiiyak yung nanay-tatay ko. Iyak sila ng iyak. At saan ang sabi ng tatay ko? Akala ko ang ikamamatay namin, yung nakakulong kami. Ang pinakmahirap, sabi niya, yung nandung ka lang. And that's true. That is being isolated. Kahit na tinatawagan namin araw-araw, kahit tinatawagan namin oh, voice at saka may video pa, There is no level that you can compare if you are physically present there. Am I right? There's no le- that cannot be compared. Where you can still touch brother Elong, si sister Janet. Di ba? Where you can still hug June, si Jenny. Where you can be with your children and hug them. Hindi mo pwedeng pantayin yun eh. Kahit na gan- gaano pa kalakas ang wifi mo, kahit gaano pa kayo katagal, but there is no level of isolation that can be felt when you're sick and at the point of death. Nag-iisa ka lang. However, merong isang tao na binago niya ang ibig sabihin ng Holy Saturday. Why? Jesus experienced death too. Si Jesus na matay din. Si Jesus na isolate din. Si Jesus experienced the same experience we had. And take note that Holy Saturday experience of Jesus was the infinite distance of God who He experienced in His life as an absolute closeness. Okay. Yung bang Nung namatay si Jesus, nandun siya sa tomb. It is the distance of God and layo-layo ni Lord. Pero ang alam ko, my Father is with me and very close to me. But take note. In a way, we can say this. That all who find themselves alienated or separated from God, find Jesus because Jesus is present 
in the experience of the distance from God. Pag ikaw, alam mo, nag-iisa ka, isolated ka, hindi ka nag-iisa. Because Jesus experienced the same death and the ultimate isolation. Jesus is there. There. In the depths of abandonment. Jesus is there. Sealed in the tomb. Jesus enters the hopelessness of death and opens up a way for us through the power of death which otherwise would destroy us. In other words, yung sinasabi ni St. Paul na death has lost its sting. Diba? Yung kamandag na kamatayan na wala dahil nung pumasok si Jesus mismo sa kinalalagyan nating dilim at kamatayan kamatayan dahil sa kasalanan pinatay ni Jesus ang kamatayan at nung pinatay ni Jesus ang kamatayan binigyan niya tayo ng buhay opening up a way for death to be destroyed because of his new life. Pakakatandaan natin, kung ang buhay mawawala dahil sa kamatayan, ang kamatayan mamamatay dahil sa bagong buhay. Ulitin ko ha, kung ang buhay ay pwedeng patayin ng kamatayan. Ang kamatayan ay mamamatay dahil may bagong buhay. That is Christ's passion, death, and resurrection. Andun si Jesus. If you feel abandoned, if you feel very isolated, Nandun ang ating Panginoon Diyos. In that Holy Saturday experience, it is a silent experience. But take note, in that silence, silent experience, we find our way through life's dark moments and go about it more confidently and creatively more confidently and creatively. That is the experience of the Holy Saturday. Kumbaga, the silence of the Holy Saturday should not threaten us. It should meet us really in darkness. We should wrestle with the isolation and abandonment. But take note, we wrestle it not of our own merits, not of our own strength, but we wrestle it because we know that Jesus paved the way and opens the way for death to be destroyed. And what really sprouts from that Holy Saturday experience would be someone is accompanying me, accompanying us, showing us with compassion and humble hope this experience. Alam mo, yun po yung nangyayari, no? Pag Holy Saturday, Huwag yung babaliwalay ng Holy Saturday experience po natin. Yung mang sabihin mo na, Uy, Good Friday, okay. Pero alam mo yung buong Holy Saturday? Cherish that. Cherish that Holy Saturday experience. And remember that in that abandonment, in that isolation that we are experiencing, in the tatakip silim, in that uncertainty, in this time of pandemic, we know that Jesus entered the hopelessness of death 
And he opened up the way for death to be destroyed. Wow. At yung masasabi natin, eto, eto yung nangyayari pag Holy Saturday. Unti-unting hinahawi ni Jesus para pag-usbong ng bagong buhay muling pagkabuhay ni Jesus ang dulot sa atin nun ay tunay na kaligtasan. Brothers and sisters of Love Flock, marami tayong experiences no, ng takip silim in our life. You know, one experience of takip silim ay pag nangangalaga ka ng may sakit. Sino dito ang nangangalaga ng may sakit? May sakit na nanay. Ayan. Good. Sino dito ang nasubukan ng mga laga ng may sakit? Uy, very good. Tama yan. Sino dito yung may sakit ka, pero nag-aalaga ka pa ng ibang sak- may sakit? Doon. Hindi ba po? Parang sabi mo, ang hirap nun eh. I think all of us here, in one way or the other, have experienced this. We have really experienced it. Yung bang... May sakit ang anak mo, kailangan mo magpunta ng trabaho, pero aalaga mo pa rin yun. O di kaya naman, ikaw, nag-aalaga ka ng mga may sakit mong mga magulang. Totoo yun. And yet, come to think of it, that is the great mystery of that Holy Saturday experience. Yung bang sabihin mong, Itong pang-araw-araw na buhay natin, nangangalaga, nangangalaga ng mga, na, na mga uh, anak natin, ng ating pamilya, ng community natin. This is really care. Okay? That is really care. At itong care na to should be part of our response in this uncertainty that we are really experiencing. Kung baga, In all this time na dumating po sa buhay natin, ang kailangan talaga natin ngayon ay kalinga. At kitang-kita ang kalinga ng tao, lalong-lalo na pag nangangalaga ka na mga mahal mo sa buhay. Di ba na-experience nyo? Alam mo yung pagod ka na? Pagod ka na sa trabaho pero uuwi ka? O di kaya naman, kahit may COVID, lumalabas ka pa rin. Alam mo, may takot ka, pero kailangan mo magtrabaho eh. Kailangan mo kumita para sa pamilya. Aalagaan mo yung, yung anak mo may sakit. Aalagaan mo yung pamilya mo. Bakit? Kasi ng response mo, at katulad ni Jesus, ayaw mo silang mag-isa. You can never leave them abandoned. You are there. That is the mystery of that Holy Saturday experience. Journeying through the passion and death of Christ. Sinasamaan tayo ng ating Panginoon Diyos. I like to end our reflection tonight. Do I still have time? May time pa ba ako? Hanggang alas 12 ba tayo? <laughs> One fourth pa lang po yung sinasabi ko eh. eh joke lang po. I, I like to end this uh, reflection with a video that, that was part of our, the project. Tayo po sa simbahan, no? And we call this project as Kalinga. Kalinga, bakit? Dahil gusto din namin magbigay ng pasasalamat sa inyo. Kayong mga nangangalaga ng may sakit. Kayong nangangalaga sa inyong mga anak. Mga anak na nangangalaga sa inyong mga magulang. Kalinga.
watch this video and this is for you. Kalinga, kaagapay sa paglingap is really a project to take care of those who care for the sick. It is caring for carers. There's so much magic uh, when you think about projects na ang gusto lang nila ay magbigay ng pagmamahal. You may not know each other but gusto po namin na maalala nyo na hindi kayo nag-iisa. That there are people who are actually praying for you. That's what Kalinga is all about. Because healthcare is not just about health, na may sakit, bibigay ng gamot. It's not just about that. Health is about humanity. Health is about life. Kalinga is about discovering also the little joys that we have in caring for the sick. We thought that we are so much exhausted, but there are many joys that is being given to us in, in those experiences. And those were moments of grace, moments of joy that we used to forget in our and the way that we care for the sick. There is joy in caring for the sick. Take note that when we are consecrated, God owned us. And when God owned us in our life, God revealed His love for us. And that love was so powerful, so enormous, so abundant, so generous. And in our life, we have that. The Lord has given us so much. But our life and our ministry to the sick becomes a concrete gospel. It is a concrete good news. And that becomes our way of thanksgiving to the Lord. Ang kaputihan ng isang tisyano na kasalalay sa pagpapakita niya ng pagmamahal sa Diyos sa pamamagitan ng pagtulong at pag-aalaga sa mga nangangailangan. Kahit may kapansanan, kahit may sakit, nag-aabot pa rin ng tulong sa kapwa niyong may sakit. That's real love. Love that is based on faith in God. A love that continues to serve without getting tired. We always would meet several kinds of patients. There would be always times na okay na okay ka. And when you are very much prepared for the work that you are doing. It is also draining your energy. Because every time you meet the patient, you always have to give them your positive energies. As we ask ourselves, where do I draw out this energy, this passion to serve the sick even if we are in a way less appreciated? The willingness, no? It is our desire to serve pe the people who cannot serve us back. I honor our God who is giving us this energy, nga, this, this passion of serving the sick. She is a watcher uh, sa ortho sa SPMC. Pinangga niya yung mama. She never give up. Thank you, Ara. Thank you.
We cannot endure from our own love because our love is limited. But we can continue our ministry to the vulnerable only if in our hearts we have that love of our Lord Jesus Christ. Carry always the love of God that has been given to us and carry the motivation of God that He would love everyone, especially those who are vulnerable and sick. In that way, we are taking care also of ourselves, as your day would be full of kalinga, care, nourishment. Thank you to our leaders. This is your day of caring for each other. Recollections like this are way of caring for each other. Recollections like this are way of telling to one another, you are important to me. That's why we are here. We don't only take care of our bodies, but moreover, we take care of our spirits. Because we are first spirits before we have the body. Mawala man ang katawan, pero ang spirito nandung pa rin. And thank you to Love Flock. Because you, you do all your means to take care of your flock. And this is a very clear, concrete kalinga. Kalinga sa kawan ng ating Panginoon Diyos. The Lord will never abandon you in our, your isolation. This coming Holy Saturday, cherish that in our life. And in return, we take care of each other. God bless all of you. <laughs>